All right, I just wanted to do a little commentary on this uh, this video here, this conversation between a uh, dirty varmint and this guy Savvy, right? The dude in the middle with the blue sunglasses on. I'm just going to refer to him as Savvy. Um, if you want to check the, the original video out, it's over on the channel uh, Praise the I Am. You can see the name of the video up there. I will leave a link to it in the comment section down below. Now, these are basically two Christians, and they're having a conversation about you know, do true believers have to have works, right? Does Christ require a believer to have works to be saved? So I want to do a commentary on this conversation, you know, because this was very hilarious, you know, uh, when I first watched this. So I just wanted to give some commentary on this. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to press play, and then when I want to leave a comment on something said, I will pause the video. Formally discuss with me right now. Right now, Dirty. I Dirty. have some questions for you. What are your questions? Praise, come on, put everyone back. And by the way, I happen to notice, right, this cat, Savvy, you know, the dude's on there, you know, dressed for the ski resort or something. You know what I'm saying? You know, the dude's dressed to climb Mount Everest. I can't be the only one who notices that. Well, what the hell is this cat doing? You know, sitting in his own home with a damn, you know, a jacket on, you know, a head beanie on and a damn headlamp? And snow goggles? Jesus Christ, man. Now, th this is this is crazy. You know, this has to be some type of, like, professional acting job right here. I mean, seriously. You know, th th this is astonishing. Do you believe that you need ready? works to be saved? If you, if you want. Yes. Whoa. Are you new? Dirty. Do you believe you need works to be saved? Did you say yes? Yes. Okay. What makes you believe that? Jesus' words. Jesus' commandments. You think we're not supposed to follow Jesus' commandments? Is that your argument? No, my argument is that we don't have to to be saved to go to heaven. Okay. It's so not. <laughs> hold on a second. Hold on a second. You know, this guy, I would bet a hundred bucks that this guy hasn't even read the New Testament cover to cover. I, I'm serious. I bet a hundred dollars. This guy hasn't even read the New Covenant, New Covenant, I mean the New Testament, excuse me, cover to cover. Because what he just said there was, you know, well, I don't believe you have to keep, you know, the commandments in order to be saved. But yeah, it's like, dummy, you do realize that Christ said in Matthew chapter 19, starting at verse 16 on down, when the young ruler, he came to Christ and asked him, what must I do to receive salvation? What must I do to be saved? And Christ told him, hey, you got to keep them commandments. So, uh, with that one verse right there, uh, you just got your beanie hat blown off, man. But I just knocked that, uh, those snow glasses off with that one scripture right there, man. Right, you just got a spiritual knockout. You said that you don't believe we have to keep the commandments to be saved, but yet somebody literally asked Christ, what do I have to do to be saved? And Christ told him, you got to keep the commandments. Matthew chapter 19 Verse 16. Say, I got how we live on earth. If we go to heaven, is there any going to be any punishment for any one of us? For our no. Work? no. No. No punishment for our works, huh? No okay. punishment for our works. Because we're justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. So our works play no part in our salvation. The scripture makes that abundantly clear. Yeah, I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about after, you know, you go to heaven and everything. Let's say you get everlasting life. Is there going to be any type of punishment for your evil deeds? Punishment in heaven? Yeah. I mean, you'll, you'll lose out on rewards that you could have earned, but that's not a punishment. It's just you reap what you sow. <laughs> so what if you sowed evil deeds? You're not going to have any type of, you know, didn't Jesus say the servant who knows my will and but doesn't do it will be beaten with many blows. But the, the servant who unknowingly does something worthy of punishment will be beaten with few blows. That's you, true. Uh, you said that. That's man. talking about physical chastisement on earth. So right. Right. wait, real quick. <laughs> again, as I said, I'm going to say that statement again. I guarantee a hundred bucks, bet a hundred bucks. This guy never read the entire New Testament cover to cover. It's like, dude, you really don't realize that the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is going to be on the physical earth. Like, say, for instance, in the Father's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, it says, Thy kingdom come, 
Let me say it again. Thy kingdom come. Where's the kingdom coming to? Kingdom's coming to earth. What about Revelation, what is that, 21 and 22? It literally gives you the physical depiction of the kingdom of heaven being set up on the physical earth. So, uh, you know, he, he he's cut one to shreds once again. I mean, this is, you know, sometimes I joke around and say some people are shock glass deep or not, you know, very smart. This guy is bottle cap deep, right? This is bottle cap deep right here. I mean, shit, this is... You know, th th this is astonishing. You know, th th this is this is hilarious. So you're there, saying, so yeah, you're saying evil doers are getting punished for their evil deeds on earth? If they're children of God doing evil deeds, so if be they're Christians on and they're doing evil yes. deeds, then they're they'll getting, be punished on earth. They're getting punished on earth. Okay, okay. So yeah. like Benny Hinn, he's getting real big punishments. He's not a on Christian. Earth. Oh, he's not. A, oh, so that's that's your ace up. Sleep. You can no. just say, well, he's not a Christian. His punishment he believes in Jesus, doesn't will he? Come. His punishment will out come in the next in Jesus life. Name. He speaks in tongues in Jesus' name, so he's not a Christian? He doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. He says he, he does. He preaches a false gospel. He preaches a false oh, so gospel. Anybody who yes. disagrees with you, you can just say, oh, they're not a Christian. <laughs> well, like me. Like what does Galatians say? Christ. The gospel we have received is the gospel of grace. For yeah, the law came by Moses. Along. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Real quick, I want to point out, it's in all likelihood this guy's a Trinitarian, right? So it's like you do realize with that ideology that you believe that Jesus Christ is the supreme God. That would mean that he gave the law to Moses in the Old Testament then, since that God was Jesus, right? So, I mean, how, how do you get around that? And then the second spiritual knockout to this cat is even Christ said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and 19, I didn't come to do away with the law. Anybody that teaches men to keep the law, they're going to be great in the kingdom of heaven. But people who teach people to break even the very least of the law, they're going to be least in the kingdom of heaven. So, uh, clearly Christ, Yahawashai, he was teaching people to live their life in accordance with the law that Moses gave to the people. Why? Because God gave that law down to Moses to order the people, right? So Christ clearly was teaching people to live their life in line with those laws. He literally never said to go out and you don't have to follow that anymore. That's not what Christ taught. So this guy is daggered. So, yes, we know so, that the gospel is grace. The gospel is good news. If you have to, oh, you, you could lose your salvation, that's bad news. Nobody wants to hear bad news. That's not the People truth. People want to hear the truth. The gospel is good news. They don't care if the it's bad news or good news. Christ they want to hear the, the truth. truth. Yeah, and the gospel is good news. Yeah, you just got this makes it. Yeah, well, well, it's true that the gospel is good news, but not for everybody it's not good news. Say, for instance, the Edomites, now as to who they are, that's a different conversation for another time, but the Edomites, that's not good news for them because the Bible says they're going to be exterminated. Obadiah 118, right? None of the house of Edom will be remaining. Right, so that's not good news for the Edomites, right? The gospel's not good news for the Edomites. Now, the gospel's a good news for descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of course. So again, of course, there's context to all of these things. So yeah, the gospel is good news, but it's not good news to every person on earth. You know, but again, this dummy doesn't know that. You know, he's just... Uh, all he basically knows is, well, I heard the Christian pastor tell me this, so that makes me smart. I mean, it's like, seriously? Which I would school all three of these cats in a, in a conversation, you know, with, with both my eyes, um, you know, covered and my hands behind my back. I mean, the, the, all three of these cats are easy work. And I want to mention, did you notice at the beginning, when they, all the people are on stage, did you notice the Christmas background? So, uh, you know, they must believe that Christ was born on the 25th and that Christians should be following Christmas. So that's, uh, that's comical, too. But anyway, I'll continue the conversation. You pretend gospel where, oh, oh, all you got to do is believe. You don't have to do any works. You don't have to stop sinning. Nobody can stop sinning. Everybody's a sinner. Have you stopped that's sinning? That's your gospel. You don't want people to have you stopped sinning? Jesus. 
Uh, none of your business. Have you stopped sinning? None of your business. Because you're preaching that other people need to stop sinning yeah. to be saved. Yeah, and they you, do. Um, you're not going to answer the question of you stop sinning? That's you're preaching your that other people need to stop sinning to be saved. My works are evident, okay? If you witness me, you can make your own decision whether I stop sinning or not. You know, you yeah. think that... Well, I'll comment on this. Of course, the Bible says, say for instance, uh, Hebrews 10 to 26, it says, For if we continue to willfully sin after we receive the knowledge of the truth, that there remains no more sacrifice for one's sins. So yeah, of course, a true believer, after they claim to believe in Christ, they can't go around and willingly live in sin. Is it possible that they could make a, a mistake and commit a sin? Of course. Scriptures say a, a righteous man falls seven times a day and gets back up. So yeah, of course it's possible to still commit a sin, but of course we don't actively live deliberate lifestyles of sin like people in the world do. So if you're saying, you know, we stop sin, well, well, yeah, we've stopped sinning. We stopped sinning by living how we used to live. But of course, time to time, it could be possible that we could make a mistake and commit a sin. It's possible to commit a sin. Like say, for instance, right, I know there's a scripture... I, let's see, I don't know if I know this one off the top of the head, but I believe it's in First Peter. Uh, I believe it's 15. But it, it says, if you see your brother commit a sin not unto death, you're supposed to pray for him. So if you see a brother in Christ, right, a brother in the faith commit a sin that's not worthy of death, you're supposed to pray for him. So it shows that it's possible for a brother in Christ to technically commit a sin. Anyway, I'll press play. Oh, oh, just because I think that Paul's a liar and a false apostle, that means I'm sinning. But no, I'm not sinning. Or filthy. Well, Dirty's going off on that. Ironically, the guy said filthy. But yeah, Dirty's going off on that because Paul wasn't a false apostle. No, Paul was inspired by God. And that doesn't mean that literally every word that Paul wrote down was inspired because he literally said in multiple accounts, in certain verses, he's giving his personal advice as a man. Like, say, for instance, um, in Acts, the seventh chapter. What, what is that? It could be, I believe it's actually 1 Corinthians, the seventh chapter. You know, where he gives his advice about, you know, marriage and whatnot, right? He deliberately said a statement in there. You know, I speak for myself as a man, nearly paraphrasing. So in certain instances in Paul's writings, he gives his own advice on certain things. But then, of course, many times he speaks from the inspiration of God. But then when he gives his own advice, he clarifies it beforehand. So, no, Paul is not a false apostle. So I disagree with him on that. Paul is a rags. false apostle. Paul is the Your works are filthy rags. No, they're not. You're a no, rags cruster. That's you what they are. that no one can be yes. righteous, don't you? you want I'm, people, I'm righteous by Jesus you Christ. You want people to think by Jesus Christ, by faith in Jesus Christ, I'm righteous. Works right. Yeah. See, you are you're you like righteous? a panhandler. You you're saying? out on the street. You've got your little pan, and you're begging for grace. You're begging to get into heaven. Oh, I'm not. I don't want to work for it. I'm not going to get a job. I'm just going to stand out here and panhandle for Christ. Yeah, right, dude. No, you need to get a job. You need to earn your salvation. <laughs> You're not going to go to heaven without doing good deeds, without earning it. All right, now let me clarify something real quick, because I think that Savvy has a misunderstanding of what's being said. And it's not only him, to be fair, because a lot of Christians misunderstand this. When we say that, you know, you have to have works, you know, and Christ requires us to have works, they get it mistaken because they think we're saying that, well, all you got to do is have works, and then that's going to save you just by those works. Like they they think that we're we're leaving Jesus out of the equation, and saying just by doing good works that's going to get you to heaven. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, of course, first and foremost, you have to believe on Christ to be saved to begin with. But he taught in his teachings that you have to keep the law. You have to have works. That's what Christ taught. So they're getting it misunderstood. We're not saying that you just have to have good works and then that's all you got to do to get to heaven. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, first and foremost, you have to believe on Christ as the this whole start of your journey. If you don't believe on Christ, it doesn't matter what good works you do, that's not going to save you. So, having belief on Christ is, first and foremost, the most important part of the faith. If you don't have that, then you're not going to be saved. That's why, which he probably hasn't read John, the third chapter, but it says, um, 
you know, he that believes not, he is condemned already, right? So if you don't believe on the Christ as the Son of God, you are condemned already, according to John, the third chapter. You know, so say, for instance, you have Israelites out there who reject Christ as the Messiah, but then they claim that they lived their life in line with the law in the Old Testament. Well, guess what? Those people, even though they try to keep the law or claim they keep the law, that's not going to save them because they reject Christ as the Messiah. So no, just by keeping the law and having good works, that's not going to save you by itself. But Christ taught that a true believer would have these works. And Christ is going to judge people according to their works. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12 and 14. It says, I'm coming back and I'm going to reward everyone according to their works. I'm going to reward every man according to his works. Then verse 14, and again, I'm going to paraphrase these verses off the top of the, of the dome. But it says, um, you know, blessed are they that keep his commandments. Nearly paraphrasing. So again, on the very last page of the Bible, Christ says he's going to judge people according to their works. And the very next following verses say, blessed are those that keep God's commandments. So um, I think that's evident in itself, just on the very last page of the Bible, that it's important to have these works and to keep the commandments. And that's what works can be, right? Works can be many different things. Of course, first and foremost, by you living your life in line with what God wants you to do, that's a good work, right? Or helping people that are needy, right, in need, that's a good work too. And we see that in Matthew 25, start at 31 on down, right? Christ brought two groups of believers and, um, you know, he asked the one group, you know, you know, when did you see me? You know, you helped the homeless, right? You helped those who were in prison. You fed those who were hungry. You clothed those when, that didn't have clothing. You know, here you're welcomed into, you know, paradise. And in the other group, he asked, well, why didn't you do those things? And then they said, well, Christ, we didn't see you, so we didn't do them. And then Christ said, well, hey, well, you didn't do it to, you know, these brethren that you saw in the world in those situations. Hey, it's like you didn't do it to me. So he rejected them into destruction. They didn't get the kingdom. He judged them by their works. So, uh, once again, this cat, Savvy, I mean, you just got destroyed once again, man. You know, you, you better, you know, take some of these verses, man, and do some studying on them, man. I mean, seriously. Faith without works is dead, bro. Yeah, and you know what that means? Get to work. That was written to the brethren. Yeah, it means get to if work. If I write a whole book, let's just say I write a whole book out on, on Google Docs. And I send it out to all the people in, in my community. And I say to the brethren, this is to the brethren, this is to the brethren, over and over and over. Do you think that's meant to be to an unbeliever? No, what, that's no? written to the brethren. And you know what James 2 means? It means get to work. Yeah, to yeah. believers. It's, it means get to work. That they don't have to do. You're saying, you came up here asking me. Do you There's a difference. You it's, I, don't, I teach you don't and need I said, to do yes, worse for like, salvation. Oh, that means you're a heretic. That means you're not you don't a Christian. Need to do if you works. think you need to do work, then you're not a Christian. If you think you need to obey Jesus' commandments, you're not a Christian. Here's the difference. It's all by faith. Here's the difference. All by grace. When you say you gotta that you need believe. to do all work, you gotta do is pretend. you're talking about... But, like, you know, one thing I want to comment on, like, even when I had a conversation with Perry Green, you know, one thing I whole run to is Romans chapter 6 and verse 14. It says, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. And I'll run with that and say, well, see, see... We're under grace, not the law. But yet, the ironic part is the very next verse, it says, What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law but under grace? God forbid, right? We established the law. Right, so it's still saying, yeah, we are under grace. Meaning what? If you mess up, you can receive forgiveness for your sins. But that does that now mean that you don't have to live your life according to the law? No. Now, what does it mean by being under the law? Very simple. Because in the Old Testament, you know, depending on what sin you do... You could be, you know, taken and stoned to death by the, um, you know, by the people over the town, right? By the, the uh, authorities that are set up there. You could be taken and stoned for your sin, for your transgression. It just depends on what it was. But today, since Christ died for us on the cross, we now have a chance to be forgiven. So, yeah, we're not under the law, but we're under grace. Meaning, what? Well, if we break the law, we have a possibility of receiving forgiveness for that. But that doesn't mean that you just go around and live your life in sin. That doesn't mean that. 
you know, and that's what Perry Green, you know, and that cult that he's running, you know, that's what they teach. You know, hey, believe in Jesus and uh, everything you do is good as long as you confess you believe. It's ridiculous, you know, but this guy's teaching something very similar, it seems. But shit, at least I'll say at least Savvy's not as perverted as, uh, as Perry Green is. So at least he got that going for him. About salvation. Oh, I am talking pretend, about salvation. Guys, and then you can go to hell no. and you don't have to suffer any punishment. That's what he said. No. You take it as that, but you know what the truth is? You are a very slick-talking man. Uh, thank like you. Thank I'll serpent. take that as a compliment. Thank you. Yeah, because you are like a serpent, and you're not <laughs> as harmless yeah, as a dog. Well, you're a wolf. But, but I'm, I mean, seriously, though, what did... And again, I'm not saying Dirty is some type of, like, you know, very intelligent dude himself, right? Because he, he says some bullshit to himself at times. But seriously, though, in this conversation, what did he do that qualifies him as being a snake right like, like, like seriously what, what what did he say here in this conversation that would qualify him as being like a trickster or trying to trick you like i mean seriously can, can you name like one thing i guarantee he, he can't name one thing but it's like come on you're a wolf uh, innocent as a dove my friend James right, too is saying get the word for the brethren. And I think you know the what? Uh, debate is Let me, over. There's no debate. This is a discussion and to reveal the, the truth that you preach work salvation. Yeah, I, yeah, I do preach, you preach work a false salvation. God. So how does that make me bad? How, like teaching people to follow Jesus' commandments, how does that make me the bad guy here? Yeah, that, that's a good question, right? I, I, I agree with Verma there. It's like, yeah, how exactly does it make us the bad guy by telling people to live according to Jesus commandments. And again, it's not just this guy savvy, you know, other Christians we've talked to, you know, think that we're like, we're bad. Like the Hebrew Israelites are bad for teaching people to live according to what Christ taught them to live by. It's like, really? It's like, that seems very weird. It's like, Oh, like, like say for instance, Perry green, he'll sit there and say, well, guys like ETT or Bible defender, you know, they're trying to lead you into sin by teaching you to keep the commandments. It's like, wait a second, what the hell? We're trying to lead people into sin by telling them to live by God's commandments? It's like, dummy, you do realize that the Bible says in, a, what is that, First John chapter 3, verse 4, for sin is the transgression of God's law. So by you telling people they don't have to live according to God's law, you're literally leading them to sin by telling them they don't have to keep it. But by us telling them they do got to live by it and that Christ wants them to live that way, somehow we're leading them to sin. But yet the Bible says the, the absence of living within God's commandments are sin. So, uh, you know, that's hypocrisy right there. That, that's hypocrisy. But yeah, that's a good question from Dirty. It's like, well, how exactly is he such a bad guy for telling people to live their life in line with what Christ taught? I, I mean, seriously, let's even go back and hear this again. James right, too is saying get the, the word for the brethren. And I think you know what? Uh, debate is Let me, over. There's no debate. This is a discussion and to reveal the, the truth that you preach work salvation. Yeah, I, yeah, I do preach You preach work a false salvation. God. So how does that make me bad? How, like teaching people to follow Jesus' commandments, how does that make me the bad guy here? Because... <laughs> Oh, you saw that? It, it, he literally pulls, and he and was thinking, it's like, shit, what do I say now? Because now, he, he's, he's put in the box right now, right? He's put in, he's put in the box, right? He has no way to, to back himself out of this one, right? Because now he's making it sound like, well, Dirty, you're a bad person because you're teaching people to have good works. And then v Dirty cornered him because it's like, well, how exactly? Explain to me how I'm like a bad person for teaching people to live according to God's commandments. And now... Savvy, you know, he's looking here like he's constipated, you know, and he doesn't know what the hell to say. He's like, oh, shit, he got me with that one. Hey, good, good job, Dirty. You, you, you got his ass with that question, man. You, you, you got him good with that one. Work salvation damns people to hell. That's oh, why. Oh, so <laughs> you are <laughs> Wait, wait, so teaching people, hold on a second. Oh, this, this is, this is great. This is great. I haven't had a good laugh like this in quite a while, man. <laughs> seriously it's like how is teaching people to have works good works teaching people to treat each other kind 
How is that leading people to hell? Which, first of all, hell doesn't exist. Hell is a condition of suffering on the earth, but that's an entirely different video. Entirely different debate for another time. But, I mean, seriously, it's like, how the hell does that make sense? By teaching people to treat each other kind and live according to what God commanded. You're leading people to hell. It's like, what type of dummy is, is this guy saying? It, it just... I don't even know what to say at this point. I honestly am at a loss for words. Honestly at a loss for words. It's it astonishing to me. Damn people to hell. That's unbelievable. Damn you to no, hell, guys. When you trust in your works, you're trusting in your works. Your faith is in your works. Your faith is in your works. Right, and, and that's why I said earlier that I think he's getting mistaken here. Because we're not saying that you're just saved by doing good works. First and foremost, you have to believe on Jesus. Because now he's... You heard what he said. He said, well, dirty, your faith is in your works, right? You're trusting in your works to get to heaven. That's not what the guy is saying. He's not saying that just by doing good works that that's going to save you. That's literally not what's being talked about here. What is being spoken about is do believers have to have works? And the answer is yes, a true believer would demonstrate their faith by their works. Is it not written in the Bible that faith without works is dead? I believe that's... Um, what is that? James, the second chapter? Which you should read over that. That's a really good one. It goes into, like, great men that we read about in the Bible and how they demonstrated their faith by their works and their faith. Oh, another good precept in, in the Apocrypha. Well, Jesus cats probably reject that, but it's true. Is, um, what is that verse? Uh, second, uh, Ezra chapter 9 and verse 7. It says, those that will be accounted worthy to escape by their faith and by their works. Let me say that again. Those that will be accounted worthy to escape by their faith and by their works. So we see the Bible taking both your faith and your works into account here. That's why Jesus Christ will say, depart from me. Because the reason they oh. asked to enter heaven was because of their works. It was because of the good deeds they did. No, many wonderful works. No, yeah, Dirty's right. He's misinterpreting the verse. That's They didn't ask to be taken into heaven in Matthew uh, 25, 31 on down just by their good works. No, the people were gathered there and then Christ started questioning them about their works. They didn't ask him. They didn't ask him, well look at all our good works that we've done. That's not what they asked him. Christ started to, like he brought it up in the conversation. Right, Christ brought it up in the entire dialogue that was taking place. So again, this guy is just he's either deliberately taken out of context on purpose to twist into his own uh, theology, or uh, I don't know what the hell this guy's saying. No, it was because you they're miraculous had no eyes work. to see. It doesn't say you have no eyes to see. Good deeds. Jesus yes. said it was because they were boasting of their Jesus good deeds. deeds. They you were, were lawless. It says they were lawless deeds. in the verse. So you're misinterpreting that. It's talking about miraculous have you stopped things, like casting out demons and stuff like that. That's what it's talking about. Have you stopped sinning? Have I stopped sinning? Well, you know, let uh, wait a second. Let the people. <laughs> and stuff like that. That's what it's talking about. Have you stopped sitting? Well, this guy, I wanted to address that comment real quick. Um, Jack Smith 77 said, Dirty Varmint is 100% unsaved. Well, first of all, the Bible says in, uh, what is that scripture? Matthew 24, verse 13, that he that endures until the end is the same that will be saved. So, by you saying that he's 100% unsaved, that must imply that you believe that you are 100% saved. And that's, um, you know, not a position you want to be in, man. Because, first of all, the Bible says many are called, but only a few are chosen. And it's up to God to decide who he has chosen. It's not up for you or up to me to decide, man. So, to sit there and say that you're saved 100% or I know I'm going to heaven when I die, that, that's a prideful thing to say, man. You know, an honest person would be like, hey, I hope that I'm going to be saved, but I don't know for sure. And that's an honest statement to say, because we don't know who God has chosen. You know, God's going to weigh all the works in the balance, going to weigh uh, whether the person was a believer or not in the balance. You know, there's many factors that's taken into account. It's not just, oh, I believe in Jesus, I'm saved. It's like, that's not how it works, man. Hey, I hate to burst your bubble, but that's not how it works. <laughs> I mean, seriously. You know, this, this is just astonishing, you know, but again, you know, gullible people believe stupid things, right? That's one of my new slogans. Gullible people believe stupid things. Have I stopped saying, well, you know, let, uh, 
let the people because decide. you're preaching. You're preaching that other people need to stop sinning to be saved. I am. So I have am. you stop sinning? Just like Jesus. Have you stopped? Just like Have Jesus. you stopped sinning? Answer the question. None of your business. You can't tell whether I've stopped. So I'll take that answer as a no because that's if, none it, of your if business. you did, you would say yes. Whether I have or not, it's the no, fact still that's remains a no. that you are required. And you know to. why? You know why? No. You are required. Because I to. know Jesus that said you need to repent. Repent of you your know sin. how I know. You know how I know that you still sin. No, you don't know nothing about me, dude. I know because you wank. You're a wanker. You haven't stopped wanking. <laughs> you have not stopped wanking. All right, this is getting you gay wink. praise. Uh, <laughs> you, you should bring up the other panel members. I don't want to talk to this homosexual. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. Oh. He's You're trying to talk about my false dick. prophet. Work salvation, homo, false dude. prophet, You're Pharisee. Homo. Let him be a curse. I'm talking about my job. rebuke him. Fungo. Jesus Christ, rebuke you. You are accursed. <laughs> you are a false prophet, Pharisee. And you will be destroyed. No, I'm the Pharisee. If you don't repent, I'm the Pharisee. That means change your mind and You're believe in Jesus the Christ. Pharisee. You, you are a Pharisee. Galatians, you will be Romans. destroyed by the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I'm off. Peace. Goodbye. My man Fuego, good job. I thought he did a great job, but uh, you know what? We're wait, gonna... wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Praise the set with again. Praise is the guy that runs the whole channel there, right? So he's like, I think, I think Savvy did a good job. You think he did a good job? Are you serious? He did a good job. I mean, I mean, Jesus Christ, that that is, that is some terrible acting. Maya Sharag will call that guy a terrible actor, right? That guy's a terrible actor. I mean, shit. I I might even make a conspiracy. I think, and again, I'm just putting this out there on the table. What if praise I am paid, um, Savvy to come on the stream? To act like a dumbass so he can get more views and more subscribers for his channel. That's a new conspiracy that I'm going to put out there. What if um, Praise I Am contacted this guy Savvy and said, Hey man, come make yourself look like a dumbass on my show and I'll give you a couple dollars in exchange for you know me getting more subscribers and more thumbs up on the video because people are entertained. I'll bear for me a second. Screen turned off. Yeah, I got to tap it every couple seconds. But yeah, you know, that's like the whole new conspiracy I got out there. It's like, seriously, can somebody prove me wrong on that? It's like, I feel like I just watched, um, you know, well, first of all, this cat didn't know shit about nothing, right? And then Praise the Center saying, I think you did a pretty good job. It's like, ah, oh, you can't be serious, man. You're, you're just, uh, you're just saying that so the guy feels better about himself. I mean, come on, you can't say that. You know what? We're going to open it back up to the regular crowd here. Oops, I hit the wrong button there. There we go. All right, I think that's uh, I think that's the end of the conversation there. So I just wanted to do a commentary on that because I just thought that was like so hypocritical and so laughable. You know, the first time I saw that, so I, I had to do a commentary on that conversation. It was so laughable. Um, but anyway, if anybody made it to the end. Put hashtag, um, let's see, what hashtag? Hashtag dirty, we'll give him a little shout out. Hashtag dirty if you made it to the end of the video, and I'm going to say shalom. <laughs>